Hello there, I'm Nick Mitchell from IBM Research. I'm going to tell you today about CUI. CUI is a part of the SIG CLI, as you can see on the lower right. Um, it's open source, been out for a few years. As part of the SIG CLI, <clears throat> as you can maybe imagine, the goal of CUI is to bring uh, enhancements to the terminal experience, to the CLI-centric experience. Um, so the premise of CUI is that we all love CLIs. In fact, as we get more and more expert, I think, as we all find with Kubernetes, we sort of tend to gravitate away from the console experiences and towards the awesome KubeCuddle CLI. And there's a lot of reasons to love it. Um, all the reasons of CLIs generally. You can reverse eye search, you can copy and paste commands and share them with the colleagues very easily. You can script things, you can make parametric scripts um, that uh, sort of in, in, in encapsulate uh, complex logic, arbitrarily complex logic. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to love it. Um, the, uh, you can pipe to the, to, to, together CLIs in really interesting ways. A lot of really cool stuff you can do with CLIs. Um, but at the same time, they're pretty much stuck in the 70s, right? The ASCII art that's <clears throat> can be quite, pretty cool, but it's pretty much limited to a control characters that was, that was designed many decades ago. So that was a challenge that we, that we were addressing with GUI. Can we bring those two worlds together? The world of design and graphics and, and, and you know, in the modern age, um, but without really spoiling the core essence, <clears throat> the reason why people love CLIs. So the basic GUI approach um, is it targets a number of aspects, I'll tell you about four today, um, of CLIs. These, you can make targeted enhancements um, really focus enhancements to the CLI based experience with the hopes by being so focused that we're not really spoiling. It's really a CLI centric but focused with focus enhancement. So the first kind of enhancement we can provide is when you type a command, kubectl get pods return, instead of um, just seeing a, an ASCII or a table, <coughs> we can present a graphical table with sortable columns. Um, and you know, uh, fun, fun graphics with in every in every row. Maybe I can have a delete button, for example. We can go crazy with all the kind of graphics we can do, as long as we have a framework that lets us do that kind of 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 interaction. Execute a command, get back a graphical table. So that's the first kind of targeted enhancement we can do with GUI. The second, um, a really important part of the Kubernetes experience, is managing context. Um, Increasingly these days, we have lots and lots of namespaces, maybe hundreds, um, that we're managing. And uh, as nice as things like oh my ZSH is are for providing um, us insight into the current context, um, we can make that better graphically by giving a, a richer way of, of assembling and <clears throat> presenting those hundreds and hundreds of namespaces in a graphical, um, well-designed fashion. But, but once we have that graphical component, then I can click on one of the namespaces and have Kubernetes magic just switch the namespace for me without having to remember the long, complex commands. And that brings us to the next topic, this notion of, of powered up hyperlinks. The notion of clicking in a terminal is pretty limited, right? I think terminals these days can recognize that you have a URL that was emitted by the CLI and it can turn it into a clickable link. Um, we'd like to generalize that so that instead of just being limited to URLs, Instead of just being, and also instead of being limited to just having the click open up a web browser, we'd like to generalize both. So I can click on a much more arbitrary set of things, like you would in a browser, um, but also make it so that the clicks can do more than just opening up tabs, which is also a limitation that browsers have. So we can we can hopefully generalize both to both aspects of that. A good example of that is what I've covered in the fourth topic: this notion of and really enriching the notion and fully integrating the notion of terminal splitting into the experience. So most terminals, you can split the terminal. You can go to VS Code and click a little split button and nice you can split your terminal into two or three um, separate side-by-side -side views. So you can do, you can get side-by-side -side views. You can see concurrent activity all simultaneously. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with splits. But there's no integration between the command execution and the splits, right? They're two separate concepts. And uh, I think we'll show you in a second some examples of how we can bring those two together in a powerful way. So the agenda today, I'm going to cover, sort of try to cover KUI in three different ways. The first is I'll give you a demo of how you can use KUI today, just to really make it, some of these abstract points more real. Um, and KUI's been around for a few years. You can brew install KUI and use it right away. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so I'll give you a demo of that first. The second, 
um, I'd like to show you how we can how that tool is based on a core framework for enhancing CLIs. The hope being that we can get um, so a much more broad base of imaginative insight to bring it to bear for this, this really important task of enhancing CLIs. The last I'll cover briefly at the end um, is the, a really important, increasingly important part of, of the de developer experience, and that's sharing, communication, repeatability. Um, and terminals, as nice as they are, I can copy and paste a command and share with somebody, but generally speaking, the, the the units I need to transmit and, and communicate and make repeatable are not just individual commands. And in a normal terminal, the only way you can do that is by making a script. Um, but I think as Python notebooks have shown us, there's a much better way, I think, much more modern way of communicating and sharing. So I can show you how we can, with a few minor changes to the core CLI experience, we can, we can have notebooks, a notebook-like experience for communicating and sharing. OK, first, let's get to the demo of KUI. So here's Kui. I brew and I did the brew install already to save you from that hassle. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you two ways to use Kui. Um, the first is as uh, from its first is from a terminal replacement. Yeah, so I downloaded Kui, I brew installed it, I got a double clickable application, I clicked on it, double clicked on it, and this came up. Um, it has an icon, a Kui icon down there in the dock. Um, it's a normal Mac OS application, rather than Windows and Linux as well. Um, so it's, but it's a terminal that does graphical stuff. So I do ls. I get, instead of just plain old ls output like I would <coughs> here, I get, notice there's no, nothing clickable here. There's some color coding, which is cool, but um, it's, uh, it's not really, um, the hyperlinks are pretty limited. So you can see here I can click. And in this case, the ls c controller um, and KUI decides to implement clicks as an ls of that subdirectory. Um, and I can, you know, I can start browsing around, I can click around on lots of different interesting things, I can click on some of the source files and I can get a, a source preview of the content of that file, um, and so on. So that's, the, that's sort of a, a simple way that we can enhance, uh, we can enhance the experience of clicking around for navigation of a directory hierarchy. We can do the same kinds of things for Kubernetes resources. So I did a kget pods. So I can do an up arrow, just like I would in a terminal, and kget deploy. Something unlike a terminal, because now we have graphics, we can make these things a little richer. I can just edit the previous command. I get my namespaces, or, oops, or get my, oops, I spelled it. Or get my uh, replica sets. Um, I can go back to deployments. Um, so you can see in both cases, in all these cases, I'm getting back a tabular response. Um, Kui has a heuristic, whether if, they're, if the number of table rows is small, defaults are presenting it as a as a normal table. If the number of rows is high, it defaults to showing it as a this kind of dense grid view. But I can also just choose to swap back to a normal table view if I want, or swap back to grid. So this is the the uh, <clears throat> the first stage, right? I've I've chosen a subcommand, kukoto get pods or kukoto get deployments, and we get a graphical table or a graphical grid as a result. Um, second thing are the context management. So Kind of like an OMI CSH, we get some indication of the current context and the current namespace. But we can do these, we can have a graphical enhancement, a very selective graphical enhancement. So here's a, a popover where I can get a list of all my all my namespaces. I can have some heuristics for distinguishing system from user namespaces. You can use this component to do type edit find, open, sh open shift, you know, and uh, the component manages all this for us. I can switch between namespaces. Um, at a click of a button, I switch back to default, and I can do the same thing for context. I can switch to another totally different cluster, and I can do a kget pods there, and you can see I have a different set of pods. Switch back to my first um, con uh, first context, first cluster, re-execute that command, and I'm back to that first set of pods that I had previously. So that's the context management. I'm just doing kind of a whirlwind tour of the KUI features. Um, so now let's think about the the more the richer hyperlinks, richer clicking, and richer navigation. Navigation is a really important part of managing Kubernetes resources. You're kind of doing a lot of, of wild goose chasing to hunt down problems, for example. Um, we've color coded these, notice, and if one of them were red, for example, because the pod was failing, it would show up as a red square instead of a green square. The uh, gray ones are for jobs that are already completed. Um, 
So I can click on any one of these to drill down. And so notice what happened. Could we split the terminal um, in two automatically? So this integrated split sort of management has to come into play. Um, and maybe I clicked on the wrong one, wrong one. So I need to cycle through to do a little, a little bit of a, a search, right, to find the right one. So notice what I'm doing. I'm clicking through a set of pods. And every time I click, um, I get a new pod on the right. But I still get, just like a normal terminal, I get a history of each one of those. Also notice that Kui does it makes its best effort to not hide the details so of the seal underlying CLI commands. So while it's decorating it with this nice multi-tab view, kind of like what you might see in a, in a graphical browser console from OpenShift or Google Cloud or, <coughs> or Amazon, we also see the underlying command. And I can change this command. Like I was changing commands previously. I want to change the namespace or change the output to be something else. I can do all that. Um, because the command line is right there. So we haven't, we're trying to keep the command line as, as integral to the experience as possible. So each one of these pods, now I can look at the re details of it. So maybe I want to see the raw YAML. I can do that. Um, maybe I want to, <clears throat> I want to delete it. At the click of a button, I can, <clears throat> I can delete the resource with a prompt. You know? So we can, we can do those kinds of enhancements. I can get an, a KubeCuddle exec into the pod like we would in a graphical console, but I'm doing this, you know, simultaneously, unlike in a console where they've made a choice to have a, this kind of very modal experience, I can be logging into a bunch of pods um, simultaneously. So you can see I have some logs showing up, I have a, a terminal um, and uh, into the pod. Um, we have some primitive filtering capability to do row-based filtering. Um, and so that's a, uh, um, so that's the, the, the experience of, of drilling down um, from a table to a pod. But once I'm there, I'm drilling down from the pod to the logs or SSHing into the pod. I can also see related resources. Every pod runs on a node. So with the click of a button, I can see the node on which it's running. There's the node. I can look at the, the node's YAML and so on. <coughs> Pardon. Notice these logs have some ANSI, uh, ANSI coloring. So Kui takes care of that for free. Um, I can also drill down to the, the replica set that manages that deployment. I can view to click down, drill down to the deployment that manages the replica set. And um, I can also see the events for any of these resources. I think these resources are all pretty old, so the events have all timed out, but you would see a, a table of events as well. So this is Kui as a terminal replacement. Um, this all the same thing holds. If I wanted to use Kui as a uh, um, as a Kukuddle seal, a, <coughs> excuse me, a Kukuddle plugin. So I do kukuro kui get deploy or get pause. Let me do that to start with. And instead of ASCII, I get back a pop-up window in this case. Um, you may see notice the similarity to what we were seeing previously. It's just kui, but instead of running in a full terminal replacement, it's running in this more pop-up kind of mode. <clears throat> but it has all the same features. I can click and navigate and drill down, get into the logs and so on. Because it's treated more as a pop-up, anyway, it's, it's a kind of run and done, right? When I'm done with this graphical exercise, I close the window and return. I don't want to look at deployments now. Um, and uh, just as a contrast to show with the ASCII art to remind you what it might look like, um, this is the ASCII art for pods. So that's the pop-up mode. So that's Kui as a as a term, as a <clears throat> as a tool as it exists today. Um, so underlying all that magic is uh, a framework for enhancing CLIs in a much more general uh, way. Um, so I'll give you some insight into that now. Um, the basic idea behind, behind Kui is that it has um, these three main ways that we've already seen um, for extending. The first is you can listen for execution of subcommands, like kukuddle get pods, and completely override what that particular command returns to the user. I'll give you some examples of the kinds of options. You've seen some of them in tables, but there's a couple others. The second is um, is more of a decorator pattern. Um, so if you wanted, for example, deck add a tab to that multi-tab view that was showing for pods, maybe you want to have a custom log viewer. Um, and Kui lets you specify a decorator. You don't have to override the command entirely. You just want to add a tab to the existing response. In Kui, you can do that, and you can be very selective. You can say, I want it for any Kubernetes resource, or I want it just for pods, or I want it just for pods with a certain label, for example. So you can be very selective about what um, kinds of resources you're decorating. 
um, and you can choose what the content of that tab is going to be. Um, in, the, in the very same kind of way, you can choose pretty flexibly what the command handler should, should return. And lastly, of course, you can have these context widgets to the experience. So the basic idea is that you would go to our template repository, click on the uh, generate and uh, get your clone, start the, the webpack watchers, run npm run open, you'll see a window like that. So let me just show you some quick examples of what that might be like. So I've already cloned and, and generated the template for you, so I'm going to just do the npm run open. There's the window that I promised. So a couple of things that we did here. First you can see on the bottom there we have a little cat and dog thing, so there's a context widget. Very easy to do fun down there. Click on that, it executes a command. Um, that's another command that we added there. We have hello dog, we have hello cat. Um, and these are examples of simple commands that uh, <clears throat> listen for a particular uh, subtree execution. So hello cat, hello dog. And in this case, return ASCII. <clears throat> but of course, you can have a lot of other sophisticated options for, um, for returning fancy graphics. You can return a, a tabular model um, and get views like the grid I showed shown previously, or a sequence diagram if, you were, if your tabular data has a well-defined notion of start and end time for every, for every row. You can get source links. I'll show you an example of that later. So if I, for example, if I do a kubectl apply dash F, it'd be nice to show the user the content of that source file so that they can, they can look at it without having to find, download, you know, go to the website <clears throat> if you're doing a dash F on an HTTP source. You can return source code that gets index colored, like is shown on the lower right. And of course, you can return that multi-tab view. And in all these cases, you can choose to have the content of the tab or the, the, the response for your command handler there just be a totally raw React component that's completely bespoke of your own design. So let me, let me give you a quick sense of, of, of going back to here of how we might do the, the decorator pattern then. So what I've done in this is I've done a decoration of pods. So I've added a cat tab. <laughs> Um, it has some, some YAML on it. I've also added a little dog button. So when I click on the dog button, it executes a command. And you can see I've added a little badge up there as well. So it's very easy with three lines of code, you can be adding these enhancements, these decorations um, for existing Kubernetes resources. Um, the pod cat tab is pretty, the code is very, is very straightforward. You write a little filter. You say, when, do you, when should this, um, this decoration apply? We have a convenience method, ispod, that you can leverage. We have you know, is deploy, is kube resource, and so on. And then you specify what the content of that tab should be. In this case, we're using a utility routine that converts the JSON into YAML, into YAML text. And then that's what shows up here. So that's the decorator, um, the, the framework. Um, very quickly at the end, I want to talk through about how we can um, sort of bring KUI beyond being just a way to execute commands and have it as a way of capturing um, our experiences um, and communicating them in a much more um, notebook-like fashion. So here's some screenshots of the kinds of notebooks that, are, that we have in KUI. I think it looks pretty cool. You can see in all cases, it's a, it's all, it's all a CLI-centric experience. You can have kubectl commands. Um, and let me show you some of those in, in, in action. Um, um, the, the real insight that, that we had for notebooks is that you only really need one or two things beyond what, what I've already shown you to get a notebook. First is you need some sort of commentary. So I can, I can write markdown. I did a command X to copy that and I paste it up at the top. So now I have some introduction to this, <coughs> to this notebook. Second is I need to save it to a file and then you're done. Now you have a notebook. Um, I won't pause that. I'll show you some of our pre-recorded notebooks. So here's one of the ones I was showing you a screenshot of. Um, you can see that Kui notices that when you when you're replaying pre-recorded output, it makes make tries to make clear to the user this is not your Kuka to get pods. This is pre-recorded output. You can see it's a little different with an errored out pod. Um, but it's 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 all other than that. It's just Kui. I'm um, running in a pre-recorded fashion. So that's Kui. Um, I. Uh, yeah, so um, we're, we <clears throat> welcome your, your contributions and, uh, and I welcome your questions.